people are like, ah, oh, well, whatever. Uh, Zoo makes for some fast games that are about the board, and that's why I like them. What have you thought about the day so far? Look, if you have to ask me what I think of aggro decks, you clearly have not been paying attention to anything I've said for the last two and a half years of broadcasting Hearthstone. I love getting in there and getting busy. Argent Horse Rider, unfortunately, it's not fitting into these Zoo decks just because they have so many good Warlock 3 drops. Hashtag nerf Zoo a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But anytime I get to play decks that are, that are aggressive, I love to do so. And now, granted, I love to tank up too. But it, for me, it's one way or the other. There's no in-between. I don't like to play like like the little slow, intricate little combo things. I'm not a rogue guy. You know, I'm not... None of that for me. It's either get on the board, start punching, or tank up, we're playing for 30 minutes. Tank up or going upstairs. Those are the, the, the only two options for... I don't know, the only two settings. Um, but yeah, th- looking at these two guys here, both had very impressive performances uh, in their first matchups. And... Uh, you know, sort of uh, different deck lineups uh, from what we've seen. Uh, Just Saiyan had a more... Well, actually, no, we didn't actually see Just Saiyan Shaman, but I, I, I'm i guessing that it's more mid range whereas Chalkies is maybe slightly more aggressive. Uh, they're probably very slightly. similar. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's like b- burn spells. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, even a lot of mid range shamans will run Flame Rear Faceless nowadays. So Chalky has Argent Horse Riders. He has Lava Bursts. Um, whereas just saying, I'm not sure he could be running aggro, but I think he usually favors that mid range. Yeah, I know it likes to practice a lot with Amnesiac, who tends to favor sort of the slower builds of the Shaman. Um, so to see Thunderbluff, Valiant, and Hex in his build wouldn't surprise me too much. To me, the story between these two is we just saw Just Saiyan take down a zoo, look very decisively. We saw Terrence look like he had kind of a similar lineup, ended up falling to zoo. So Chalky had beaten a similar styled lineup. Just saying, had just beat a lineup like Chalkies. Now we get to find out which of the two of these is going to succeed versus each other, given that both of their game plans, despite being opposite, had won their match. This is yeah. this is a good one to me. Yeah, this is going to be really good. And um, different paths as well. We talked about it a little bit, but Chalky, of course, uh, actually qualified through the feature tournament through uh, the open his open tournament win in open number six. Uh, I believe, which was the last one. Uh, Just saying, of course, being one of the invited players uh, to this week, along with uh, Terrence M for Group A. Um, and so, uh, you know, a little bit different roads for these guys, but Just saying has proven his worth. And, you know, speaking of open tournaments, uh, if you guys want to participate in more open tournaments, uh, the One Nation Gamer Circuit is, is sort of the way to do it. Uh, it is limited to U.S. only, but uh, if you're in the U.S. and, and you want to sort of get your feet wet with, with open style tournaments, uh, then you know, head over to One Nation of Gamers or Geico.ONOG.GG and, and sign up for the next Open, which I believe takes place on June 16th. There's still four Opens left throughout the rest of the year. That's four more chances to qualify for the feature, four more chances to qualify for that land finals at PAX Prime, and get your hands on some of that $1,000 prize pool per Open. So um, I know I, I haven't had much of a chance to play in Open tournaments lately because of my schedule. And uh, I know that's that's admirable, has it? Because of his schedule as well. But <laughs> Same. if we could... We would be competing a lot. The thing is, is if we compete in the opens, it means we would win, and we wouldn't cast. And no one would cast. And no one would cast. <laughs> yeah, it would just be of me and Abel winning all the opens. Yeah, with, we could with cast no our own games. Yeah, We've done that no before. Com- yeah, <laughs> cast ourselves being good. Do you, do you remember uh, that event? It was like way back when, when people would get really angry at pre-recorded events when they took place because it was the yeah. only way to edit them because there was no there was no spectator mode. No spectator, yeah. And so I got asked to cast an event, and I was like, I did play in this. Yeah, that's me. Go, <laughs> I go, yeah, that's fine, just do it. And I was like, oh, yeah. all right, let's give it a go. It worked out yeah. pretty nicely. but Spectator mode made things really easy. I know in order to sure. do live tournaments, what they had to do was like uh, encode the stream on onto like live onto a hard drive and then play the the replay back at like a 10 minute delay and sync them up together it was yeah. nuts so if it wasn't from was milk cast there would have yes, been no exactly. hearthstone esports yeah at the beginning it just wouldn't have happened what in the world is in just saying's hand okay. i mean i i know i said he's a control player i know i expected a slightly slower shaman there's a storm crack two hexes and a nazoth in his hand <laughs> well this is this sort of reminds me of the uh, the deck that um, Tides of Time played in the prelims. He actually played it on stream, so a lot of people are familiar with it. Now we actually saw all 30 cards in the deck because it went to fatigue. Um, he played like a Nazoth uh, slash Yogg slash... What? What, slash, what is this? Yeah, this, this is it. This is the deck slash Elise. 
with Chillmaw with no dragons. There's, there's no tracks in this deck. Chillmaw is just ran because it's a taunt that gets brought back by Nassau. Now, I'm just guessing here, but uh, it's a pretty educated guess. There's not many dragons that you can run uh, besides Azure Drake in this deck that would make much of a deal. So this is crazy. I know I've heard Amnesiac preaching a little bit about this list. He, he, he said to me that Nazoth Control Shaman is good. And he thinks it's he, he has said that he thinks it's one of the better versions of Shaman, which I'm very surprised by. And we're going to have to find out if it's one of the better versions, because this is a serious hand from Chalky in this game. Yeah. And Lightning Storm's a great card, but it doesn't really hit five health very often. So that Dark, dark Shadow Council is going to uh, gonna live for quite a while. The thing is, though, uh, Halzeal the Ascended, in combination with Elemental Destruction, is a similar effect to Reno Jackson. Um, and that a lot of times it heals you for full, especially against decks that are uh, like Zoo Warlock, where they flood the board pretty often. And uh, it's very crucial to their win condition. Uh, I mean, this is looking... This is going to look like it's going to make it mighty rough for... Uh... For just saying here, this is a lot of action in Jockey's hand. Yeah. Hmm. Well, he's, he's going to fit in a tap because uh, otherwise he would just play three one drops this turn, which is not the strongest of plays, especially since he knows that. Well, he might know that this is more control oriented deck. He, he's got to have that read by this point. He wants to make sure he paces himself with this damage. But that's a really slow start for a deck that wouldn't be Control Shaman. It'd either be a Control Shaman or a Midrange Shaman with all the Thunderbolt Valiants and things from below early on. So, yep, it's just going to load up the board here. And honestly, Lightning Storm's not looking too good here. It'll leave three minions behind. And now with that, with that Lightning Bolt, though, he can actually make sure this Councilman doesn't stick to the board. I think this is yeah. a very important draw here from just saying. Yeah, that, that, not only would it leave the, those three minutes behind, it would also buff the Dark Shadow Council by two if he didn't take up, if he didn't pick up that Lightning Bolt. So he's going to be able to clear it off. And, okay, Lava Shock ends up working a little bit better just because he can actually play things uh, next turn. So a uh, nice spot there by saying utilizes that coin uh, to unlock his crystals for the next turn. But a serious reload. Yeah, he's still going to be under some heat here. I mean, some heat. This is double knife juggler is one of the scariest things that can happen after you just use your lightning storm. Mm -hmm. This is this is bad news for just saying. Yeah. Goodness gracious, this damage oh, is real. Boy. Power overwhelming is the last card in hand for Chalky as well. I mean, this is potentially threatening lethal next turn. Yeah. If he picks up a minion or even just another burn spell here, like, uh, oh, just I saying. Just saying hand is. Oh. Yeah. He doesn't really have a way to do multiple things here. If he wants to lightning bolt down one of these knife jugglers, he has to play Elise as his minion, which doesn't help him right on the board. It, it does put a body that can contest next turn, but what he's worried about is dying. And so uh, he has to go for it. But it de definitely doesn't feel good because it also makes his next turn, he's going to be in the same position. He's going to have five mana with, you know, just a clunky hand filled with uh, lots of medium-sized drops. Oh, geez. Now that will be hexed, but... Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't imagine Chalky like tapping this turn if you're drawing that. I think I think the question here is whether or not you power overwhelming and, and take out this Elise. Well, he wouldn't be able to play Sea Giant. Well, well I'm saying you, you play the Sea oh, Giant okay, and okay. power overwhelming. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. You know, do you do that this turn? I mean, that's this mm -hmm. is a real consideration because Knife Juggler sticking around, I think, could potentially represent more damage than the one than the uh, power overwhelming could. But at the same time, if he uses power overwhelming, now his Leroy draw. Is not going to be lethal, and Lightning Storm picked up for just saying, but he's a mana off of Lightning Storming and taking out this Sea Giant, so yeah. this is going to be Hex. I, I think if he had if he had gotten a, a taunt on him there, he that's would have do it. He would have thought about Lightning Storming. Yeah, that's going to do it here. Power overwhelming and the four damage on board is going to end this game. Chalky, very clean victory from him. I mean, the no trade on the on the Elise is definitely the better one here. Just understanding that. He needed to have not multiple things outside of that clear this yep. turn. It's just the very obvious ones. Uh, and so it just takes a very decisive game number one. You know, even in the face of a lightning storm there, you know, pretty convincingly wins that one. I mean, forced to hex with Sea Giant, let his knife juggler die, and then still won the game, you know, just kind of kind of an easy had life tap going afterwards on that. I mean, just saying needed a lot of things to go right to recover from that board position. 
Ah, <sighs> such a weird deck. Like, what what is that deck in there to beat? I think it's like, there it, to just not beat the aggro decks. Is what I think. Just not be. <laughs> it's it's there to lose to a lot of the decks that are there I, right now. Well, I imagine it beats Cthulhu Druid pretty darn well. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, it's just yeah. ultimate late game control with a, a lot of removal. Uh, I mean, you only have two hexes though. That's the thing. And does it really go that wide to where you can make favorable trades and and get timely hexes? Well, we'll definitely have to see. I, I can see that matchup. Uh, definitely being possible as this game goes on. Unless Chucky's able to take a win right here with Cthune Druid against Zoo. It is dependent on having that early game, but he does. He's got Disciple of Cthune. Uh, he does have the Swipe, which are both key cards in being able to stifle this early game. Yeah, we'll see how he chooses to tackle this board. And just saying, you know, kind of not not really any option to do anything other than ignore this. Chucky can't just clear the whole board down, which I imagine is what he's going to do. Uh, that'll roll into Disciple of Cthulhu, maybe. Is this going to Disciple of Cthulhu and take the lead? So understanding that the board pressure really means a lot in this situation. Now, Councilman is a card he doesn't have checked at the moment, which is exactly what Saiyan's got in his hand. Uh, yeah. And it's certainly a fantastic play right here. And Chalky's turn three is actually just dead. So if he doesn't pick up an Innervate uh, or a Wrath, he's not really getting the job done. And just saying, very, I'm likely he's very patient with the Knife Juggler here. Do not risk... At dying, and second Disciple of Cthulhu gets picked up. That's r perfect to clear this out. Yeah, I, I was going to say, there there is a chance that he could just, if, even if he didn't pick anything up, he could trade in and, and hero power down the Councilman uh, to try and uh, make it vulnerable to swipe next turn. Uh, something, something along those lines, but uh, picking up that second Disciple of Cthulhu is huge, because now not only does, did he get to that early game, but now he, he has that sort of plus 10 Cthulhu out of the way. Uh, he has the 10, 10 Cthulhu out of the way. So if he does draw into Twin Amps, uh, he has that activated without having to worry about it. Uh, same with Klaxi Amberweaver, even though that's not as important uh, in this matchup because playing one big 410 a lot of times can be slow. You, you need stuff that reacts, that is uh, challenges the board instantaneously. Yeah, and you might be looking at that trade from Chalky and thinking that's really peculiar, but it accomplishes two things here. Number one, it makes sure that the Councilman runs into Fandral and it's actually going to die. Number two, in the event that Fandral gets run over by Power Overwhelming, it sets up Councilman to be vulnerable to swipe here. So really good catch from Chalky to, to just go ahead and sacrifice the 2-1. It's already done its job, and now it's kind of working towards your overall game plan when you decide to make that trade. So really like that he caught that. Oh, but look at this. Soulfire. Ooh, I guess he's not okay with it. Huh. So far, it would have been a pretty clean trade onto the uh, Fandral while preserving the... Like being just Soul Fire and then trade in. But I guess he values that Dark Iron Dwarf. He doesn't want that discarded. Yeah, I kind of like this play a lot more from just saying as well. Uh, the fact that if Chalky decided to swipe this turn, it's a pretty dead swipe. And so knows the 2-1 is likely to get value here. If Chalky decides to hero power the 2-1... It means he's not developing anything, so kind of just relegated to playing a 5-drop and hoping to get the most of it. That gives mm -hmm. Just Saiyan the opportunity to actually use this 2-1 now and continue to trade up the curve and move the way that Zoo wants to often do, which is just continue to build this state over and over again. Now, Chalky happens to have Blood Mage swipe on this, so this actually works perfectly for Chalky. does take a little bit of damage here and leaves behind a 1-1, one -one, but that's a pretty gar darn good deal considering that this is the board state where you normally lose to zoo when when yeah. druid doesn't have a way to get out of this especially since the 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 reload from just saying won't probably won't be that large and he's got dark Arakoa uh to follow that up so uh even cards like sylvanas can be pretty good to play on a board that's not that powerful because it allows you to uh, have that ability to get full clears a lot more easily as the game progresses but i think this is uh, I mean, what is he, he thinking about here? And I, I would think that Blood Mage Soundos plus Swipe would be pretty automatic, but is he debating whether or not he should uh, try and hear the power? Is, is Blood Mage going to be more valuable to, to something else as this game goes on? Is there something else to think about? Well, like you mentioned, I think the Sylvanas is the debate here and actually feels comfortable dropping the Sylvanas, which I'm a little bit surprised with because the Blood Mage Ooh. Swipe is just so good right here. So now, actually some liability to get punished in this spot. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage available from Saiyan. I think this was an unnecessary risk by Chalky, and frankly just 
just a mistake. I mean, this is like the one board state where you don't want Zoo to be pulling ahead. And all that would have happened was Chalky would have had a 1 1 Blood Mage versus a 1 1 Possessed Villager. He would have effectively prevented all this damage. And now instead, he's staring down this board, which is looking almost unrecoverable from this state. Well, he can Blood Mage swipe uh, now and also. I mean, he could, like, Blood Mage swipe on the Void Walker and then trade into the Dark Iron Dwarf to steal the either the Abyss Sergeant or the 1-1, one one, but he'd be left in the same spot that he would have last turn with a Blood Mage Thalmos on his board and a 1-1 one one on his opponents without minus a Sylvanas. Minus 10 life. Minus 10 life. So, yeah, it's a it's really interesting choice. Like, even even if that same outcome occurred... And he was able to steal something more impactful for Savannah. Is that worth taking that much damage in order to accomplish the same thing? No, I, I personally don't think so. And now at this point, just saying, does have some draws for lethal here. That's not one of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. He's one damage off lethal. I mean, you got to tap here for it. And you can even see him smile and laugh about it. It picks up the power overwhelming. And that's going to be the punish. Just saying, going to get on the board here. I think this is way too greedy from Chalky to drop that Sylvanas on turn six. This was a very clean Blood Mage swipe. I, I'd really like to hear what his thought process was on that because Chalky, you do not see this guy misstep rarely ever. And so if yeah. he's playing that Sylvanas, he has some sort of plan in mind. I'm just curious exactly what it is because in that spot, I personally am going for the Blood Mage swipe every single time. Yeah, I, it seemed like a bold call. Um, and I, I, I was expecting him to sort of think about it for a while and, you know, maybe feign other options and then go for it. But no matter what you do in that situation, like Blood Mage Swipe, as soon as you see that that's a possibility, you're like, oh, that's an automatic play. Like, well, there's no reason why you wouldn't make it. But uh, interesting choice to go for it. And uh, he, he does pay the price of a game loss. So now we're going to go into game number three with with it all tied up. And we're going to get to see this, this matchup, which I'm actually very interested in. It's going to be Cthune Druid from Chalky versus this crazy, wacky Nazoth Halazeal deck with Chilmaw and no dragons. I'm calling it right now. This is a bad matchup. I mean, there's just no way this can be a good matchup. I don't, I don't, it's, like, where does Chalky find a real edge here? Like, unless he's got the exact kind of hand he has right now, I feel like <laughs> I all mean, the removal and the card draw potential from just saying is going to outmatch this. Yeah. There, I mean, there's a chance that Cthune just gets to 30 damage or you get Bran on the board with Cthune, but I feel like, you know, they're, they're so... You, you know exactly what this deck is going to do. Like, you know exactly what the drops are going to be, and you know exactly what's gonna, still going to be left in the deck. Whereas, this deck, from just saying, like, even if it gets to the late game and it's sort of just like a stalemate where no player can win, just saying has the Elise Star Seeker. So he's got sort of that inevitability where he can just play the map, play the monkey, and just have a bunch of powerful legendaries that he can drop onto the board in that sort of stalemate situation. So it's going to be tough. I don't know about you, but when I think of inevitability, I definitely think of Cthune being the one that wins a lot of those inevitability wars. But the thing is, Cthune with the Druid only has a limited amount of buffs that it can receive. Like the biggest Cthune I've seen in the Druid is like a 2020, which, okay, 2020 is great, yeah, the... but like when is just saying <laughs> with this deck ever going to be below like 20 health uh, with nothing on the, the goal? I think the goal of the game is going that long is to couple it with, with a brand. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that Chalky could er easily look for here. And this is going to be a great turn for Chalky. I mean, Fandral just once again, paying off in spades, that innervate is going to be held for a long time. Like, this is this is kind of like where the game plan leads if it goes to that double state. In brand it's double Innervate? Cthune? Yeah. Okay, it's well, been my plan if, in a lot of the games. If you put it that way, then <laughs> I agree. Then maybe that's going to be the game plan. And it's like the I, new Force of Nature double Savage Roar. Sure, yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like Chalky's had a great start, and another way that you can probably win this matchup is just by pressure, you know? Just... To get those big minions on the board, you know, start threatening with cards like Fandral with the twin Emps that's going to come down next turn. Double four sixes are really hard to deal with, even if you have double lightning storm. That's still not a guarantee to kill it. Maybe with Blood Mage it is, but that's a lot of resources having to be invested into into that type of thing. Yeah. So it's going to be the hex on Fandral. It's just such a powerful minion to leave and play. I mean, the fact that he's got Fandral even to keep that pressure up is so important here. And counting the damage here. I'm curious if that Twilight Elder actually ever helps here. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Would be one damage off lethal, even if he dropped the Twilight Elder here. So like to hold on it. 
Okay, so... Wow, that's an ugly turn. That does win the Joust, but no, it's only an extra two life at this point. The funny thing is, there's actually not many minions in this deck. And the minions that it does have are very powerful. Just uh, Chalky actually had lethal if Just Saiyan did not <laughs> did not heal that turn. Yeah. But very similar situation. So when you're in Chalky's spot, you see this heal and you think to yourself, what does this mean? And honestly, he might conclude just hero power go. Hmm. You, you know that there's elemental destruction in this deck. I mean, there has to be. We didn't see one, but it just makes sense, especially with Halazil being in there. And, you know, that ultimate control style deck, you, you sort of have to run elemental destruction for those emergency board clear situations. Yeah. This one a little bit more easily sniffed out, I think, than a lot of these weird board clear situations. It is going to be double lightning storm to clear this off, so... Shocky going to hope to draw something for his reload. The second swipe, honestly, it was a good draw, but at the same time, kind of a bad draw. Just in the fact he doesn't have any gas to go with it afterwards. But now, all of his bad draws are kind of out of the deck. Living Roots is really the only card left that doesn't really do anything. Mm. Knows that Saiyan's overloaded for four this turn. Do you hear its call? I'd really like to see Chalky not innervate a hero power here. So, brand, the brand... Innervate, innervate, Cthulhu dream is off the table at this point. I, I mean, I think Chucky realizes that that's a long ways away. And if you give Just Saying that much time, I don't think you win anyway. He's he's playing to his hand right now, and he is setting up that lethal. He's forcing uh, Just Saying to have a lot because he knows that there, there's a bunch of overload. He's got to have not only an overload un overload unlock, but either a heal or a way to clear off this board, or or Chucky's home free with the amount of damage that he has. Yeah, he's gonna be lightning bolt. And uh, Lava Shock, the cheerleader to join. Get him! Yeah, blow up that minion. I'm on <laughs> camera, Mom! Team Sarah gets out of the table here. If Chalky draws a living root, he's actually got lethal. Azure Drake, is that enough for lethal? He oh, doesn't Bob's, have enough mana. Oh, doesn't have enough mana for it. Azure Drake's oh. still definitely the play there. <laughs> I think it's definitely the play here. If only he had held on to the second minute. No, no, no. Blood Mage could have made a huge difference in the last turn, so... Um, second Azure Drake, but he, he does have to use a swipe here in order to preserve this board. Uh, oh, to... this, is looking, this is looking like an interesting turn here. I mean, Just Saiyan's going to be able to heal and potentially drop Sylvanas next turn. Which is a pretty big deal. I mean, the heal is super important here, too, because Jockey's, Jockey's just got so much gas left in the tank. Instead, it's going to be Totem. Who imagine was looking for that spell power totem? I mean, if this heal doesn't win the joust, I guess it won't be enough either way. But that's, I mean, now you're out of healing wave, so this damage is going to start to stick. Doesn't and win. Doesn't so. win. Ties the joust. I mean, there's still a lot of expensive minions in Chalky's deck as well. Cthune being one of them. Uh, he still has the dark Arakoas and things like that. So, um, just this saying, it's going to be beastly. Oh my! This is this is looking really bad for just saying. I mean, at this point, he's kind of he's you know kind of starting to run out of gas here. Yeah, Chalky's gonna have swipe dark Arakoa, face for seven, and an Azure Drake behind this. He may even consider the hero power here, but I don't think it's I don't think it's relevant with most of the burst gone. Yep, just gonna just gonna pass and sixteen power Cthulhu at this point. How do you how do you win from here if you're just saying? Even if you clear the board and get down a Sylvanas or anything, what do you do against a Cthulhu? How do you heal back up to full? You need multiple turns, multiple draws, lots of time, and you don't have time with this deck that doesn't have many misses at this stage in the game. A lot of the cards that are still left in Chucky's decks are just reasonably sized threats. Well, oh that's gosh, a miss. Like Foxy Amber. What? I mean, it's a miss for lethal. But it's not a miss for just a strong body that'll well, threaten can't clear over the and over again. Doomsayer here. That, wow, oh, Chucky's that's just going to dig anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. So now, now Just Saiyan has entered the super dangerous territory. Like, needed this to succeed, I think, to have a real chance in this game. Fall into eight. Can't kill the Azure Drake. But there's a taunt in the way to handle the first attack of Sylvanas. Jockey's going to be able to stick another minion to the board afterwards. 
and still a lot of draws in the deck can just outright end the game. Elemental Destruction's a great pickup, though. That's going to clear the board and drop Sylvanas down. I have no time for games. But is it going to be enough? Now that Elemental Destruction's gone, he's sort of got that, that heal out of the way. But, I mean, this is... Uh, this could be... This could be close. As long as Sylvanas is there, Cthune can't be played. And I think just saying, sort of realizing that, like, ah, well, if Cthune's, if he draws Cthune, I sort of have to play Sylvanas. Sylvanas is my own to drop anyway, so I have to play the Sylvanas. It's yeah, tough. I think I'd like to see Chalky make two one ones here. Looks like he's going to hold on to it. Wants the surprise damage on the burst to be there. Just saying, going to steal this. I mean, I imagine this is a lightning bolt on your own Sylvanas here. Lava Shock instead. Rolls a taunt as well. That's pretty huge. Yeah. So, four, five, and a taunt totem. And more totems to come. But it's only seven life. Chalky's got 34 health. And his deck is pretty darn stacked at the moment. Hmm. I mean, that interface's not doing anything right now. And he doesn't have a swipe left. So he doesn't really have many draws that are going to get him there. I mean, I guess Raven Idols, if they're in the deck. But we haven't seen one yet. And Here's he, the thing. With Blood Mage added Blood Mage. in here, yeah, with Blood Mage added in here, I would venture to say the Raven Idols probably been cut at this point because we've also seen two yeah. Living Roots. Uh, and this deck oftentimes only runs one copy of Living Roots. Yeah. So it looks like he's replaced the Raven Idols with those. And he's actually just going to Living Roots face... And attack that taunt totem. He's playing partially for a Drew to the Claw out here as well. Yeah, but a healing totem is going to do work. A Stormforge axe. That's not a what? good draw. That is not <laughs> a good draw right now. <laughs> hey, man, that's six damage for two mana. Give me a break. <laughs> Three mana. Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. It's just, yeah. That's just there to buff Tunnel Trog. Yeah. If there is a Tunnel Trog. I'm, I'm going to be honest, if you have to say if there's a Tunnel Trog when referring to a Shaman deck, I think that's the bad. wrong build. <laughs> it's a bad I think that's shaman the wrong deck. build. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Good point. I mean, even just Cthune is just more likely to steal it this turn. Ah, Sylvanas. Pretty I mean, solid. I guess if you just Sylvanas, Cthune's chosen, and innovate out hero power, how do you lose? It's going to be really tough. We'll see what he decides to go with here. Both lightning storms are gone. Elemental destruction's gone. Does he run two? I don't know. Chalky's going to think this over. Wow. Actually just going to be patient and pass. Oh. I'm very surprised by that. And maybe a little bit punished here for that pass. Thing from below is going to hit the board. Lightning bolt to clear this out. And I think just saying going to hold on to this axe to attempt to continue to... Oh, no. Never mind. He's going to get busy. I was about to say, I think Chalky was worried about a second Hex there, which is why he didn't drop it. Both Hexes are gone. Oh, they are they are they gone? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. How's your Stormboard Jax now, says Harrison Jones. Two more cards picked up for Chalky. Oh, so close to the lethal here. Sylvanas going to put massive pressure on this board, just saying his back is against the wall right now. Down to four. Only eight mana. Karen is not good enough. And that's going to do it. Chalky is going to win game number three here. Uh, well, no, he can't. No, no, no. He can't. Totem will do it. Yeah, Tall Totem will just get Discipled of Cthulhu. And he gets Healing Totem anyway, so he's going to throw it on to Karen and hope that there's not four damage remaining. He has seen both swipes, but that is going to be Chalky taking it. Oh, you definitely brand the Cthulhu's. Oh. Uh -huh. Definitely brand. No! Uh -huh. Incorrect way to victory. Chalky 2 1. Now over saying, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I think that Chalky's curve is what won this game. I don't I don't necessarily think it's the builds for the matchup because yeah. I still think that Shaman deck is probably favored. I just think that given the way that the hands panned out, Chalky had so much pressure at every step of the way. I mean, this was turn two wild growth into Cthulhu's chosen into clear the taunt totem, clear the manatide totem into Twin Emperor, and yeah. that is ridiculous ridiculous amounts of pressure when you're talking about trying to fend off things threat by threat by threat and then yeah. hoping lightning storm can clear things up instead he had to double lightning storm he had to use resources inefficiently just too much the thing is you you give that shaman deck time 
you don't have that good curve, you aren't able to put on that pressure, you give him time, Nazoth comes down. How does Cthun Druid deal with a Nazoth board? Even if it just brings back two things. It brings back Karen Sylvanas. What do you do? You don't do anything. You, you, just, it, you just lose. You don't have Raven Isles. Can't get that Raven Isle into Mulch. A really heavy opening hand here from just saying. And Chalky Sands panning out very nicely. I mean, this is potentially turn three fame, flame wreath faceless. That guy's a mouthful to say. Yeah. Favoring Shapeshifter Fire Blast here. We have the Doom Hammer, so probably Shapeshift. Actually, like almost, uh, yeah, almost 100% Shapeshift. I mean, I, the Surf Finley is just weird in this deck. You have Thing from below. I think it's fine. I think getting a life tap for a smork shot is... Yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, I guess you have to in the aggressive deck. I think it's it's not about Finley. It's about like the thing from below choice. But Totem Golems, Flame Tug Totems, Tuscar Totemic all are Totem Summon. So, I mean, I mean, I guess even if you play Finley turn one, you're still going to reduce the thing from below likely by two before it even comes up. So, ah, I guess it's okay. Ooh, that's a great draw. I'm just saying here. I mean, that could be the saving grace of this game. Ooh. Wow, that is going to really slow down Jockey. Yeah. That Doomsayer was the perfect draw for just saying. And no way to deal with that. It, it was a little bit susceptible to a Flame Tongue Totem, but that's about it. And with Tuscar Totemic, there's no way for you to position a Flame Tongue Totem in between two minions. Uh, if only you could play the Tuscar Totemic and then place the Totem where you wanted it. Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh. It hurts. All, all of those uh, draws earlier from Chalky are sort of coming back to, to bite him in the, the first series of the day. He's getting him a turn late, it feels. It does stick a Flame Wreath to the board, so that's going to run over that thing from below. Yeah. And even potential for Coin Flame Wreath on the back of this, which <laughs> I think is going to be really hard to pass up. Thing from below uh, can still get reduced by two Totem Golem and Tuscar Totemic in hand. So not a bad reload here. Chalky looks like he wants to begin extending the board, start investing into that discount on Thing From Below, and use his Flame Reef basis to follow up on AoE. Yeah. Mm. Plus his turn six is looking mighty now with that Flame Reef basis and Totem Golem. Yeah. Ah, this is going to be a pretty good play from Saiyan, though. That Stormforge Jax is going to be able to do work against this board, and, I mean, how do you close out a game against this deck? Look, double healing wave. Your curve is not high. I mean, your strongest minion is four mana. And he already has both of them in his hand. I guess you could get the second thing from below. Uh, pulled out of your deck, which would be a six for the joust. But uh, most of the time, he's healing for 14. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm liking the Doomhammer here, honestly. Just begin to clear this board up a bit. Get Totem Golem online. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's going with Flame Tongue Totem. It's going to be thing from below, almost certainly, if that's the case. Alongside yeah, Totem Golem. Yeah. Uh, he would have to use a coin in order to do so, but that's plenty fine. I think a double Doom Hammer is really hard to get effect out of, but I think uh, a board before burn is definitely going to be his uh, his motto here. He wants to just try and get a board online before he starts hacking away with one of these Doom Hammers. Ah, which I, I, I think that's a good choice. This is a great lightning storm for him, though. If he rolls four, I guess, yeah. He's okay with taking that damage, I suppose. With double healing wave in his hand. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of looking all sand from here. This is kind of the, the last hurrah here for Jockey with this flame wreath faceless. You know, this, this kind of... Last turn, if he had played the Doomhammer it would have invested into this. So he kind of would have fell into the same position, except Saiyan would have had a chance to develop here, so that may have been something he was considering uh, with his plays, that in the event that Saiyan does have Lightning Storm, that it he has to forego development in order to get that play off. And he still has to take five damage to clear the Flame Wreath. I'm sorry, to clear the uh, thing from below. Mm -hmm. So kind of working overtime with those extra minions there. And just Saiyan actually doesn't have a way to stop this Flame Wreath Faceless's turn. Well, he can go for a healing wave. 
I mean, he's got to be worried if he plays one of these six drops that Chalky just has Doomhammer Rockbiter, he's dead. I mean, it's I, I guess it's not incredibly likely, but I mean, that's I, that's the way you lose this game. I mean, I don't know if he's got an option, honestly. I mean, yeah. I, I, if he heals for seven with Healing Web, he loses the Joust. Oh, All right, wow. Well, Chalky I mean, I like out. to play. I like to play here from saying needs to take a risk at some point. And that honestly isn't too bad. Now Chalky can set those Feral Spirits to block that Sylvanas for a couple turns, drop that Argent Horse Rider, and start connecting with that Flame Reef Faceless. And I'll tell you what, seven sevens add up really quickly. I mean, you know, War Golem isn't that good, but when you can play it for four mana, War Golem's pretty good. Yeah. Eerie Statue, when you get that sucker by himself. <laughs> okay, it doesn't there. even have Overload. Yeah. Urshock and Aerie statue play multiple flame wreath faces in our shaman builds. Don't worry, love. The cavalry's here. <laughs> it's kind of like overloading. It's overloads for one, right? Yeah. Yep, so here we go. Nine to the face. And Saiyan's going to have to get some big healing waves here. I mean, heal healing waves is pretty big regardless. But if he doesn't win this, oh my goodness, he lost the joust. Yeah, I think from below is definitely a way to do that. Is he going to. I mean, given what he saw last turn, he's just going to go with the second healing wave here. Wins this okay. one, though. Back to 28 for Saiyan. Now, Chalky does have Doom Hammer and Shapeshift at this point. So the damage is going to keep pouring on here. Yeah, I mean, that's 11 just on the board. So, I mean, he's just going to start getting this damage in. He's going to deal 17 damage this turn uh, with this Shapeshift. Shift. Oh, okay. Yeah, He's going to play the long can, game. You need to clear that Mana Tide Totem. That's one of the scariest ones to leave around. And it looks like he's even going to mop up these zero twos. Doesn't want Flame Tongue Totem to be a big deal. Oh, just the just the um, the Spell Power one. And then connects with face the rest. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 damage for Chalky next turn. I wonder if this is a bit of an overstep considering that he would have had exact lethal in a different pan out here. Oh, that's going to be Lava Shock. We're going for the Steel, boys. Uh-oh. Gets the Horse Rider. So that's not what he wants. But Chill Maw is going to block some damage. Of course, I mentioned that earlier. It's more li most likely this deck just does not run any dragons. The Chill Maw's in there just for the taunt. Oh, jeez. Oh, that is a huge draw from Chalky right now. That's going to kill Chill Maw in one swing. He gets to swing the face for six. Connect for seven again with the flame wreath faceless. That is that's like the miracle draw for Chalky right now. Yeah. Now what does Saiyan do? I mean, he needs a taunt, he needs Nazoth, he's out of heals. He needs a lot. I think he needs like James Franco off the top. This next card <laughs> needs to do everything. He needs Neil deGrasse Titan. Titan. Okay. It's, it's well, someone here with some science to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and just saying, goes ahead and taps out, and despite what seemed like a really great opening for just saying, being able to keep control of the board, Chalky finds a way to victory and takes a, a swig of the Snapple to, to, to celebrate. He's going to be moving on to the playoff stage uh, on Sunday, guarantees himself $750, guarantees himself 10 Geico points at the very least, which, since he competed in another feature, means his Geico points are getting up there. Even if he doesn't qualify, he's likely to get up there through points uh, to make it at the end of the season. Yeah, I think, talking about that last game for a second, uh, when Chalky played into the Lightning Storm, I think this is actually part of his game plan. Is when he saw the Lightning Storm again, Just Saiyan had to forego development in order to pull that turn off. Chalky was able to follow up with the Flame Wreath Faceless, and it went untouched for the rest of the game. What, three you turns? You cannot leave seven sevens around and hope to win games. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. And it wasn't that just saying decided to leave the Flame Wreath Faces alone. It's that he was out of gas. He didn't have a way to deal with it. He had to take the 50-50 with Sylvanas and hope that it succeeded. It didn't succeed, and that wrapped the game up. Even if he had taken the 7-7, Chucky still might have won the game. Yeah. He just didn't have... Chucky was still at, what, 24 health even after taking a hit from the Chill Maw? And there wasn't much of a way for him to, to fight back after that point. Uh, like you said, even if he were to take that big drop. So, uh, Chalky moving on. And uh, just saying, of course, he's not out of the tournament yet. This was the winner's match. So, he'll go down to the decider match to face off against the winner.